the first piece we heard was a, off the OMEA Class A list, actually one of the hardest was middle school pieces that the state recognizes, a uh, piece called First We Dream. Um, before I play this next piece, uh, boy, we're just really happy with the 8th grade band this year. They've been working really hard during class, making a lot of progress, and playing some very difficult music, and I, I know I speak for all the staff here at Franklin Heights, and I just say how excited we are to have these guys come to Franklin Heights here in just a few short, oh, really just a few short weeks, guys. Um, in fact, I told me the other day that, you know, in the start of Mr. Rabbit's eyes, they are now freshmen. I, I still have to think of them as 8th graders until then. After contest, you guys are freshmen in my mind. We are very excited to have these guys in the, fresh, in the Heights Marching Band. We know it's just a very successful program here at Franklin Heights, and we know they're going to do a great job contributing to it. In fact, I'd like to recognize, if you've already turned in your registration form for high school band, if you are signed up to be a future Falcon, you can please stand for recognition at this moment. If you haven't gotten your form in, guys, absolutely not too late, but we would like them this week, so please get that taken care of. Um, and if you haven't received the registration form yet, Mr. Sturm's contact information is actually in the program. If you just give him a call or send him an email, he'll go over the handbook with you and get you all the information, but you know, absolutely not too late to get these guys signed up for the high school band. We're really looking forward to having them in the marching band next year. Uh, with that being said, I want to invite Mr. Sturm to guest conduct the band since we are thinking of, thinking of these guys as freshmen and I can tell you that next year in the high school band, they are in great hands working with one of the best band directors that I know in Columbus and someone I really could not do my job without his help. Please welcome, join me in welcoming Mr. Sturm to the stage.
Before we play the next one, I'd also like to recognize the eighth grade members of the band who are traveling to solo and ensemble. So if you are going to solo and ensemble in a few weeks, if you would please stand up for recognition at this time. And yet, and again, if anyone is still interested in taking a brass or a woodwind solo, or if any percussionist would like to join the percussion ensemble, absolutely not too late. Uh, I would just ask if you're interested, uh, please get that form by the end of the week. I do need to do the registration this weekend for that. Uh, let me grab my notes for this next piece. This next piece is called The Great Steamboat Race by Robert W. Smith. Kind of an interesting title, and there's actually a story that goes along with this that I feel that once you hear it, it really helps you understand what's going on with the song. The first time two steamboats met and passed each other on the Mississippi River, pilots and owners have competed to see whose boat was the fastest. Perhaps the most famous of these races occurred in the summer of 1870 between the Robert E. Lee and the Natchez. In June of 1870, the Natchez made a record-breaking run from New Orleans to St. Louis in three days, 21 hours, and 58 minutes. Captain T.P. Leathers and the Natchez were lauded as the fastest on the Great River. Captain John W. Cannon of the Robert E. Lee decided that the success of the Natchez could not go unanswered. While waiting for the Natchez to return to New Orleans, he readied his great steamboat for the race by stripping her of excess weight and declining all passengers and cargo. Captain Leathers of the Natchez welcomed the challenge. However, he refused to lighten his load. On the last day of June, 1870, the two boats left New Orleans and raced up the river, with the Natchez carrying passengers and a full cargo load. Captain Cannon had arranged for barges to be floated alongside the Robert E. Lee to alleviate docking for the refueling process. In order to stay in the race, the Natchez was forced to do the same in its response. The race continued with each boat paddling furiously up the river. Along the route, a thick fog settled over the famously tricky river. Piloting the great steamboats through the constantly changing river required visibility. Thus, the two boats throttled their boilers to a standstill, waiting for nature's permission to continue the race. As the fog lifted, the race ensued on the final leg to St. Louis. The Robert E. Lee was victorious, arriving in St. Louis a full six hours, 25 minutes ahead of the Natchez. So with this piece, he really does a great job of just capturing the spirit of the two boats, uh, especially with the Natchez, you're gonna hear a lot of great New Orleans jazz in there, a big Dixieland section, a lot of soloists, and you can also hear the other boat just racing down the river as absolutely fast as they possibly can. A lot of fun to play, a lot of fun to conduct. I hope you enjoy this piece. Thank you. 
the music that you heard from, from the flutes, from the clarinets, the actors, a lot of the woodwinds, actually was an authentic uh, Clyde and sound of the Steamboat era. Um, growing up in Cincinnati, they always had a riverboat cruising through, especially during the Tall Stacks Festival, and I actually remember hearing that as a kid when I'd go and see the riverboats down in Cincinnati. Uh, boy, before we play our last song, just a lot of people to thank. I also want to thank uh, Mr. Stern, Mr. Rivlin, and the whole Franklin Paint staff for just opening up their beautiful auditorium to us. I know. You guys are very lucky to be coming to a beautiful new school in just a year or two. I want to thank Mr. Phillips and Ms. Bela, our administrators, for being very supportive of band here at Finland Middle School, as well as all the staff being supportive of us. And, of course, I just always want to thank you for bringing them to the concert, supporting them, listening to them, practicing, providing the instruments. Uh, kids, we can take a second and give our families a round of applause for all of their hard work. Before we play our last song, just a little bit of logistics. I would ask at the end of the song if uh, you could remain in your seats in the auditorium. Mr. Stern will turn on the house lights, and uh, kids, I'll need you to look out and to find, find your ride home. Please don't walk home in this weather. Find who's taking you home, and then we're going to let them go back to the band room, put away their stuff, and they'll come out here and find you at the end of the concert. We're going to finish up with one last song. This is a piece that, well, many pieces that I'm sure you're going to recognize. Um, I always tell my kids if they don't know who John Williams is, Listen to the first two notes of Jaws and you instantly recognize him. Many of these pieces, even if you're not familiar with who John Williams is, you're going to recognize these pieces. He has influenced just about every major movie for the last 40 years in our country. Hope you enjoy a tribute to John Williams. <laughs> 